Okay, so let's talk about uh, temperature and, and states of matter. Uh, temperature is used, temperature is used to measure the average kinetic energy. So when we ask what is temperature, it's basically a measure of how much kinetic energy is in something. If it's a very high temperature, you have a high amount of kinetic energy. Okay, and therefore, you're going to be a gas, which we'll talk about later. If you have a very low temperature, you're going to have a very low amount of kinetic energy. usually going to be a solid okay so temperature is used uh, to measure the kinetic energy okay let's talk about uh, solids liquids and gases all right solids. all right they have low kinetic energy They're very rigid. Okay, you've seen a solid. They have um, they have a definite volume, meaning it doesn't matter what you put them in. Okay, what container they're in, they have the same volume. You can still measure their length, width, height, whatever, and get their volume. They also have a definite shape. Again, no matter what container you put it in, it's going to have the same shape. So if you have a beaker. Okay, or a, or a cylinder of any kind, and you put a ball in there, the ball is still the same shape. Okay, so it still has its own definite shape. It still has the same volume, so it's going to have a definite volume. All right. Their particles, if I were to draw on a microscopic scale, if I were to draw their particles, they would be very, very rigid, very, very structured. Okay. And they wouldn't flow a lot, right? They would more vibrate back and forth. Okay, they would not pass one another. They wouldn't be able to flow. And the particles, and they would just kind of stay in their one rigid spot. Okay, that's what makes them have a definite shape and a definite volume is the fact that these particles don't move out of their um, out of their spot. Okay, so let's talk about um, liquids. Liquids, these have a, I mean, if you want to go small, medium, and large, these have a medium amount of kinetic energy. Okay, so they're higher than solids, but they have a less amount of kinetic energy than gases, right? These have a definite volume. Indefinite shape. Indefinite shape. So what does that mean? Okay, if you were to put... But it's going to be in the shape of a beaker. Let's say we put it in a beaker that looks like this. Now its shape, still 100 milliliters, but its shape is that of the beaker. Okay, so whatever container you put this liquid into, that's going to be the shape of it. All right, its volume is still going to be the same, all right, because it has a definite volume, but it has no definite shape. All right, and if I were to draw this on a microscopic scale, A little bit further apart. There's not a whole lot of uh, structure to it, All right? And these can flow back and forth, like like if you put marbles into a uh, into a bowl and just started moving the bowl back and forth, and you see the marbles move over one another. That's how liquids work. Okay, so the particles pass one another.
liquid. Okay, so let's look at gases. A gas has the highest, highest amount of kinetic energy. It's because they have so much energy that the particles have to move away from each other. And they move very fast. An indefinite shape. And then volume. Yes, okay. If you were to put, uh, you know, if you were to blow up a balloon, okay, of the balloon. So you have a balloon shape. And that balloon has is the volume, okay? So you have the same volume as the balloon. Okay, now let's take the same balloon. Let's take, let's say if we had one of those big, long animal balloons and you made it into a daggone uh, dog or something. I don't know, or a giraffe. I don't know how to draw this thing. Okay, now this air is in the shape of a dog. The volume is whatever the volume of this balloon is. Okay, so you have the volume of the balloon. And then you also have the shape of the balloon. So that gas that you breathed into that balloon is the shape and the volume of that balloon. Okay, now how can the volume be indefinite? Well, we can compress the particles because they're so far apart. We can compress them and make them into a larger volume or a smaller volume depending on what the container is in okay if we had a if we had a coffee can and we put the lid on it okay the shape is the shape of the coffee can okay so you have the shape of the can and you also have the volume of the can whatever that volume is all right so the gas inside that has that shape and that volume if we were to draw this on a microscopic scale, you'd have particles all over the place, and they'd be going very, very fast in all kinds of different directions. So, I mean, that's how that's how a gas works. It's the, because it's the highest amount of kinetic energy, they're going to be very far apart, and they're going to be very fast moving. Okay. Um, Let's see here. What else? One last thing about gases, they are they are easy to compress. Okay, so you can compress them. And they are also uh, easy to compress. So you can make that volume smaller just by putting pressure on, on the outside. Uh, it's like if we had a container here, all right, and we had gas particles in here and we had a little piston okay we could put force down onto that piston and close this volume down maybe to here you still got the same number of particles but the volume has changed because we've put that pressure down on it okay so they're easy to compress all right and they also expand Okay, because the particles are already far apart, they expand even further apart when they're heated up. Okay, just like a balloon. If you, uh, okay, if your balloon here is at 39 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, we'll use Fahrenheit, 39 degrees Fahrenheit, that's just above freezing. All right, the particles are fairly close together, but they're still in gas form. Okay, you heat that up to... I don't know, 55 degrees Fahrenheit, your balloon gets much bigger. Same number of particles is in there, but because they've been heated up, they're, they've expanded. So the balloon is bigger, okay? So it gets bigger as you heat it up, right? That is solids, liquids, and gases.